guys. I hope you guys are doing well. If you can see me, you can hear me, give me a thumbs up so I know everything's working before I get started. Um, I'm very excited to be with you guys today. Being with y'all is my favorite. And today I have a really fun project. This is a super approachable project, something anyone can do. If you have never used milk paint, now's your chance because this project is a fun one. So I'm gonna crack my window, it's a little warm in here. Um, the funny thing is it was actually snowing this morning and now the sun is out. I'm like, oh, hey, I'll keep it up real quick. Um, anybody else seeing snow already? I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for this, but here we go. Um, okay, my name is Kathy. I'm from the Upstream Home. I'm here in Buena Vista, Colorado. I love Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint. Um, and I've been painting furniture professionally for about five years now and shipping coast to coast. I'm super excited to be with you guys today and share a really easy project with you. And I hope that you guys feel inspired by this. This transfers to all kinds of different things. This does not have to be just about candlesticks. Like anything that's small and wooden, you could do with this um, approach. So you'll see, I'm just gonna give a little shameless plug here behind me. Um, I've been working on these garlands. These are all painted with Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint. This has been a really fun project and very time consuming. If you think, wow, I wish, I could paint 1 million beads. That would probably be really fun. Like, yes, it's fun for a few. And then you're like, wow, this is taking a lot of time. <laughs> but they are turning out beautiful. So um, these are actually for sale on my website now. If you go to theupstreamhome.com, you can um, find Christmas garlands there. There's three different lengths and four different colors. Um, and I really am excited to bring them to you guys this year. And I was telling someone this morning, I was like, this might be a 2021 exclusive. <laughs> so... If you decide you like them, go get one. I would love to send one in the mail to you. Um, thanks, the wood garland is gorgeous. It is it is really pretty. I am like very excited. I'll show you guys a little bit more about that later, but I'm very excited just about the earthy tones and just a new take on the wood bead garland that we all love so much. Um, okay, I'm gonna share with you guys today candlesticks. This is something I think you guys can see over here. Um, this is a finished, set, if you will. I'm going to do sets of five, a set of five. Um, and today I'm going to walk you through start to finish. And so we're going to paint it together. We're going to distress it together and we're going to wax it together. I'm not going to do all five pieces in every step of that, but I do want you guys to see how doable this is. And I think the best way to do that is to just show you so that you feel confident trying it yourself at home. So, okay. This is the, fin the finished product, if you will. So lightly distressed. I feel like my lighting's a little bit bright on it. Um, but there is definitely some distressing in there. If I hold it closer, you can see. Um, some distressing in there. And I think these would be really pretty on a mantle and also on a table, scape, or a centerpiece for your coffee table or for your Thanksgiving table. And so hopefully you guys will feel inspired to try something um, new for your project at home. So, um, okay. Today I'm using ironstone milk paint. Love this white. I've already mixed it up. I mixed it up about a half hour ago and I, I did a cup of paint, which is way too much for this small project. Um, a cup of paint and a cup of water, but after I'm done here, I'm going to go back to painting beads since that's my new life. Um, and I will use all this paint today for sure. So I would say if you're just doing something like this, like a quarter cup would totally do the trick for you. And I think you could do a really fun color um, that coordinates with your table decor or with the season or gosh, this is so easy. You could honestly just do candlesticks in different colors and change them throughout the year. If you wanted to put them on your mantle, um, that'd be a really easy way to do that. Okay, so like I said, I mixed this up about a half hour ago, so it is ready to go. Um, and these candlesticks, you can honestly find this kind of stuff pretty much anywhere. You could find it online easily. I'm sure you could find it at Hobby Lobby. I live two hours from Hobby Lobby, so I don't get to get there often. Um, but these are just unfinished candlesticks. I actually really like the color they are. I think they would be pretty with just even like a wax over them um because they could use a little sheen but these are ready to go so here we go all right do you guys do 
What do you guys do for like table decorations at Thanksgiving? Do you do paper plates? Do you go all out? Um, do you like creating a centerpiece? Do you like buying a centerpiece? What do you guys do for your Thanksgiving table? We tend to keep it really simple. If I'm 100% honest, you're probably, some of you are probably like rolling your eyes at the idea of paper plates, but I feel like my mother-in-law taught us that we could do that a few years ago, which is kind of surprising since she's from Texas. I didn't, I didn't know Texans could do things like that. Um, and I have like never gone back. I'm like paper plates at Thanksgiving is actually kind of brilliant. You guys like get some fun paper plates that are decorative and festive um, and save yourself like hours in the kitchen afterwards. Like I love the cooking. I love the meal. I love being together. I don't love doing dishes. Okay. It's just is what it is. Um, so we tend to keep it easy, but we do decorate. I think it's fun to just have festive colors around. I always am a fan of fresh flowers. Um, I have a friend here in Buena Vista who is very talented florist and her arrangements are so pretty. Um, so I'd love to see one of those on my table this year. Um, yeah, but the other thing I like about this particular project is that this isn't single purpose, right? Like it's not like, oh, if I use that one time, it's done. Like, no, you can repurpose this. Um, you could have this with green garland on your mantle for Christmas time. And then what could we do for, for fall? What would you guys think would look pretty on the mantle with white candlesticks? Give me some ideas. Um, I like to turn my Halloween pumpkins with faces around. Oh yes. Two for one. I love that. And decorate for Thanksgiving. That is really smart. Just turn them around. I love that. Um, no waste, right? Just keep using them. Our Halloween pumpkins were mostly carved to this year. And so they're starting to fall in. Um, so I don't think we'll be able to turn ours around, but I wish we could. Um, maybe if we drew on them or painted them, you could even paint them. That would be fun, right, Chris? Like, um, taking them from Halloween to like more festive Thanksgiving colors would be really fun. Okay, you can see a little pink, pink goes a long ways on these. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys too, just a minute about scale. And so I decided to sell these as a set of five. I'm gonna be doing a show at a Christmas fair in a couple weeks and these will be something that I offer there and only there. Um, and I was trying to think about how I wanted to sell them. If I wanna sell them individually or as a set, what do you guys think? Would you, if you were shopping, would you prefer to buy one at a time or would you prefer to buy them all as a set? Um, I'm curious about that. And I thought a set of five, because you could do like two on one side of the mantle and three on the other side of the mantle, or you could space them out on a bigger centerpiece on your table, but three also is a great number to work with. I just liked the, all the varying sizes of these particular five. So that's why I went with five. Um, maybe I'll sell some as sets and some individually, but honestly, if you guys have any insight on that, on what you'd be looking for as a shopper, I would love to hear what you think. All right. So this one is actually going to take two coats. I'm just going to paint one coat with you guys and then I'll do the second coat later today, but I do have one that already, this one over here already has two coats on it. So I will distress that so you can see just how quick and easy it goes. Um, I'd like to buy individual. Okay, that is helpful to know. Anyone else, do you guys prefer individual or would you prefer a set? And then you guys can just, I guess, build your own set, right? I guess I could do a build your own set candlestick. That'd be kind of fun. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is this would be a great, if you are into hand making Christmas gifts, you could paint wooden ornaments. Um, I think like the, yeah, there's lots of fun wooden objects that would paint and distress and wax very easily, like these candlesticks. 
And so just apply like the same method, same idea to those projects. I'm actually gonna come back with a smaller brush. I forgot to grab it for right now, but this is, um, this isn't great, a great size for inside this candlestick. Be sure to look, be sure to look at Hobby Lobby. Is that what you mean? I'm not sure where to be sure to look. Look at the camera. Am I not looking at you guys? <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to keep painting these and finish these up real quick. This is also, I think I'm doing white because I think I'm just going to stick with all white candlesticks. Um, but if you like a little more color, this would be a really fun way. Oh, at Kathy's website. Yes, go look at my website. <laughs> Thank you. Um, these would be a great way to jazz up your decor. If you like have a special accent color you like having in your living room or in your dining room, um, and you're having a hard time finding exactly what it is you're looking for, like just create it. You can create this a lot less expensively, more inexpensively, um, than probably finding exactly what you're looking for. It'll be one of a kind. No one else will have one. Um, unless you decide to gift them or sell them. Yeah, this is a great little project. I keep thinking that these in terracotta would be really fun. I'm like, ooh, I wish that might be something I need to look into is painting some wooden decor in like a terracotta color. Um, blue is another popular Christmas color. And so to do these in one of the Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint blue colors would be really pretty. Um, I'm trying to think which one I would probably start with. There's so many great blues. I love all the blues. Um, but yeah, all kinds of options. You guys, I was thinking today how I always tell people if you're starting painting, furniture, decor, whatever, I always say like start small. And I've always said like start with an end table, like just find something that is really easy. It is not a big commitment. If you get halfway through it and you're like, oh no, like that's okay. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not like you started on like your grandma's like armoire or a huge hutch or something. Um, and then today I was like, no, I was like, don't start on an end table, start on a candlestick. I was like, this is a great place to learn. Um, and that's what I mean by like, this is a very approachable project. This is low risk, high reward, it's something that is super functional and decorative and easy to enjoy for a season and then put it away or gift it away, whatever you decide to do with it at the end of the season, you can do with it because it was only a few dollars investment, right? Um, okay, so those five are painted. You guys saw how fast that was. That did not take long. These will be dry in probably 20 minutes or so. They do not take long to dry. Um, which is one of the things I love about Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint is that I can just keep working. Like as soon as I finish a project, I might have to wait a half hour or so, um, at longest an hour, and then I can get right back to work. So I really like that about that. These ones I painted a few days ago. You'll see these have pretty full coverage. These are two coats on these candlesticks. Again, I have the five different sizes and shapes. And when you guys are doing this, like add, if you are looking to do candlesticks or something, um, I suggest looking for different shapes, looking for different sizes. That is a great way to add visual interest really easily. Look for different scale. Um, you want them to be complementary, but if they're all the same, that's one thing. But if they are, if they have some variety, that usually is more interesting um, and just visually appear, visually appealing. So keep that in mind as you're trying to decide what to do. Um, that was honestly even some of my consideration with these beads back here. Like I have different shapes and different sizes um, and they can all work together, but it's not just like, hey, here's the one thing. Um, there's a couple different offerings you'll see there. So I'm gonna start with 180 sandpaper. This is super easy. I think that sanding on camera is really noisy. So I'm just gonna do one of these for you guys so that you can kind of get the gist of it and then I will not make you keep listening to this I promise okay okay 
So I'm just going to, again, two coats on here, very full coverage. You can see a little bit of gritty around the bottom, which I love. Um, and I'm just going to quickly come back I'm gonna leave some of the texture on there. I'm gonna bring some of the wood through. I like the variety. I don't mind the texture. That's what I'm going for. Um, there we go. I feel like that's easier to see. And so I'm just quickly hitting it with the sandpaper to kind of just knock down any rough edges. Um, but I'm not trying to get like in every nook, nook and cranny. I'm not. They're all going to be distressed a little differently, and that's fine, too. Um, I'm going to hit the top a little bit. Get around those spots that are kind of sticking out. Like, those ones are easy to hit. And bring a little more distressing through. And that's it. I think I did everything. Okay. What that take me? 30 seconds? So I will do I will um, share some pictures. I'm gonna do a blog post after this and I'll share some pictures of kind of how they look in the process too, so you guys can um, have an idea of exactly what you're going for on each step. These ones, if I was not on camera, I would um, just take my shop vac and just vacuum all the dust off it. That's what I usually like to do. I'm gonna hit these with a paper towel to get the dust off just so it's not so noisy for you guys. But if I wasn't on camera, I would be using my shop back just real quick. Okay, that's it. Um, gosh, I kind of want to see if I can show this to you guys. I'm gonna turn down my light a little bit because I feel like it's kind of, okay, you can see a little bit more contrast with the dimmer light. And you can see there's like a little drip mark there. Love it. You can see the distressing throughout. You can see the distressing along the bottom. So it's pretty light and subtle, um, but it is smooth. And I like, I mean, I could sand this out for sure, but I like the texture. So that's just personal preference. You can do the same thing with an ornament. Um, you can do the same thing with lots of different, um, with lots of different things. And yes, it does smooth so, or it does stand to be a very smooth surface, which I really do like about it. Um, just a little bit of sanding knocks off that texture and gives it a very finished look. For this one, I'm going to use furniture wax to seal these. So this is the um, furniture wax in lavender because I was like, ooh, if we have these out and out, they should be smelling good. So I'm gonna use lavender for this particular project and one of my like waxing um, hacks is I like to use an old clean, clean sock um, and I just put on like a latex glove um, and an old sock over top and I do that especially if I'm using a dark wax because if not my skin tends to get stained from that. So I'm just going to use a sock. A little bit of wax goes a long ways, so I'm just using a tiny bit on here. I'm gonna start there, and just kind of work it through. And this will be done in no time. So, if you guys are watching this and you have other thoughts on other like wooden decor items that you could personalize for your home by easily painting them with milk paint. Will you drop those in the comments so other people have some ideas too of what else they might wanna try if candle sticks isn't super appealing, like maybe it's ornaments, maybe um, maybe it's a wooden sign, just something small that would be a fun piece of decor that is easily finished. So there you go, start to finish. That's it, all done. Um, so I'm gonna finish the rest of these once I get off with you guys. Um, but if you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you want to come follow me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram. 
at the Upstream Home. And if you're looking for furniture or any Christmas garlands like you see behind me, you can also find those on my website, theupstreamhome.com. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a close-up of these because this is a, uh, Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint with a dark wax over it. And so you can just see how different of um, looks you can accomplish with milk paint. So let's pick one. This is a red five-foot garland. Okay. And this I painted with tricycle and then added a dark wax over. I did not want like high gloss plastic looking Christmas beads, you know, the kind, right? Um, I wanted something that looked earthy and looked handmade and looked um, festive and farmhouse and vintage and just all the things. And so that's how I decided on this. Um, and so you'll see when you go to the website that there is red, green, white, and then a natural pine color. Those are all available. You'll see there's a couple different sizes. This five foot is personally my favorite. Um, and I think this would look really pretty across a smaller mantle, whether you lay it atop garland or um, also would be pretty on a coffee table. If you were to like wrap it around some candlesticks or just other decor items, I think it would be really pretty there too. So there's lots of ways to use this. And I'm definitely calling them Christmas garlands. But another thing I love about them is that you can use the different colors through different seasons. So like the red easily transfers to fall. The green would be a really pretty spring color. The white you could use anytime. So there's lots of options, even though they are truly um, designed with the Christmas season in mind. So, okay, let me just see real quick if you guys have any questions. Love the beads. Thank you. Yes, you're so welcome. Thank you. I think for a great product that's so fun to work with. Um, Okay, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to finish these candlesticks. I'm going to paint some more garlands. Um, I also have a bench I'm going to be painting. So lots of fun things. All those are with Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint that I'm working with today. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Come find me on social. Come stop by my um, website. Garlands are available as of yesterday. Um, and I'm running a sale through tomorrow. And it's... Um, through, yeah, through tomorrow. So if you are interested in those, go check them out. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.